Hey everybody, uh, I'm Matthew Miller. This is another Fedora Council video call. The Fedora Council is the top governing body of Fedora and leadership body as well. And we try to conduct our business mostly not through meetings, but it turns out meetings are important for getting things done. We have uh, on matrix text-based chat meetings most of the time, but we also have some of these high bandwidth video calls where we try to talk about important topics. And we have a very important topic today. Uh, as many people know, we're trying to figure out what to do about you know, this whole AI large language model thing, how that fits into the Fedora universe. So we did a survey. And so now we have Greg Sutcliffe, who is a Fedora person who also works on Ansible and is a data scientist. And he did some analysis of the survey and he's going to tell us what he found out. So welcome, Greg. Thank you to for doing this for us. It's really appreciated because surveys turn out to be hard. Um, and you know, especially uh, figuring out what people are, what, what's what's the overall thing from a lot of different inputs is a right, hard problem. Right. Yeah, so. surveys are very hard. I was about to touch on that. <laughs> but thank you yeah. for having me. It's, it's always fun to play around with this kind of stuff. I get don't often get to do this kind of maths very often in the day to day. So it's nice to get to do some some of the fun stuff that I like doing. So um, let's let's get some preamble out of the way before I do some screen sharing. And um, the first the, I have a couple of things I want to, to mention uh, as broad points before we get into looking at what I've prepared. The first thing is that we didn't have a very long conversation about what you wanted out of this. <laughs> so I hope this is useful. <laughs> I kind of had to take a bit of a gamble on um, my my understanding of where we're trying to go my understanding is that this is a very wide-ranging kind of we're just trying to get a feel for the lay of the land like what, what how do people feel about this so i've kind of kept it fairly high level i haven't had the time or, or the space to go super super deep with some of the the analysis um but uh, hopefully what i've done is useful to you i i quite like the, the certainly the last couple of plots i think come out quite nicely uh, i hope they're useful um in the spirit of constructive criticism, I want to address two points about the survey itself. Uh, I had no idea who actually wrote the survey, so this is in no way intended to point fingers at anybody. I just wanted to say for the future, these are some things to consider. Um, firstly, this cannot be in any way interpreted in a causal manner. There is no way to say this is what Fedora thinks or the Fedora community thinks, right? We have no way to deal with sampling bias or survivor bias in the survey itself. Um, there is no... Um, we know we know certain types of people are more likely to fill out surveys, right? particularly when they feel strongly about a subject, but there's other categories and dimensions uh, to that bias as well. You can account for some of it, but you have to account for it at the design stage. Um, and uh, and you have to ask, generally the way to do it is to ask questions you already know the answer to um, that you can then link into data sets like the DNF count me data or Fed message bus or the other, you know, the wider Fedora surveys and things like this. This is how if you look at how um, say political surveys, I don't know if you ever stopped on the street and uh, and get asked uh, about voting intentions or healthcare or whatever it is they're interested in. There's always some generic demographic questions about age and ethnicity and things like this. And it's because they already know the answers to those ones. So they can weight the survey back to make it look representative of the wider picture. Right? We can't do that here because we don't have those questions. Um, so all of that is just to say, be careful how you interpret this. Do not start making statements like, we think the whole community thinks this. You can't draw those conclusions from this. Right? All you can say is this is what the survey said. The second thing is to do with the uh, the last question, the, the question about the, the use of AI in various contexts. Um, it's got the word uncertain as one of the answers. And um, the problem is that the word uncertain is uncertain. <laughs> it's not clear what it means to the respondent, never mind to me as the analyst. It doesn't make it obvious whether it means, I don't know enough about AI to answer this question, which is more of a NA kind of blank answer, or it could mean, I know plenty, but I don't think it matters here. It's like, I don't know, really know where to put it. And that's more of a neutral, right? That's more of in the sort of disagree, neutral, agree kind of scheme of things, right? But given that it's not clear what that's supposed to mean, we know we're going to have, we've got 3,000 responses to the survey. We know we're going to have a mix of those two types of answers in this one column or 10 columns actually but um and so therefore there's not a lot i can do to treat it because there's going to be some that we should throw away and some we shouldn't and we have no way to tell them apart so uh takeaway i'm having here is we're uh we would 
love to have your help designing our future I survey. I would be delighted to help with that. <laughs> we've, we've got the uh, no, 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 no shade thrown on anybody here. This is hard stuff. And, when, and before I started teaching myself more of this, I wrote terrible surveys too. Uh, I look at some of my old surveys from the satellite and forum community, and they were awful. So, mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's it's fair play. These things are harder than you think. Um, in in if you had put like an NA option alongside, then we could have had more confidence that uncertain genuinely means neutral. And then you could do like some three point categories and things like this, uh, what are called Likert scales in the literature. Um, so where you, Likert scales are more typically seen as kind of, you know, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. Those are Likert scales and they have lots of um, good things you can do with them. Um, I can't treat it like that. So what I did, and I will get onto the plots in a minute, uh, was I just threw away all the uncertains and just looked at the yeses and nos. Because there's actually plenty of those anyway. If you just do that, you still have like 2,000 responses. So um, so that's what I did. Uh, and then I could treat it as a binary outcome, right? So I can start asking questions like, what's the percentage someone's going to say yes to this? Um, which is quite a nice way to look at it, actually. You get an idea of sort of that um, approach of what's going on here. The third thing I want to comment on survey design is at no point do we ask what people's general opinion of AI is. Um, there's 10 questions on how you think it fits into different contexts. Um, but there's no generic just kind of, well, okay, we have the free text. We have two free text questions about people's general opinions, but there's no kind of, you know, give me a, give me a one to five on, on how you feel about AI in general or something like that. In fact, there's no numerical questions at all in the survey. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it's, it's, it's interesting that we don't ask about the thing we actually care about finding out about right? we got plenty of free text uh, <laughs> oh i know and i have some analysis of that for you okay, um, cool. but what what this leads to and what i'll talk about a bit more as we get onto the plots is um that means i have to treat it as something we have to discover right so this happens all the time in the psychology literature for example right you can't ask people if they're extroverts what you do is you ask questions like do you like going to parties right and you try and discover this kind of latent unmeasured variable underneath and that's kind of the approach i've taken i think that's kind of what we were going for when we when we made this question like that, oh, but uh, you know, w without without any expertise on it, so well, it's fine. I mean, it meant I got to play with some interesting techniques that I don't often use because I would just go and ask the question, right? But <laughs> so, right. Um, but yeah, so let's get some plots. Um, let me let me screen share here. Um, um, so um, first thing I did was just some very simple bar charts. You don't need me to make bar charts, but you got to start somewhere, right? Um, so. Here we go. So this is, I'm going to switch to the tabs. I can't see you guys anymore. So there's three three main questions and two free text questions in the survey. The first one was, what's your role in Fedora? Um, and, um, oh, that's some nice overlapping that I hadn't spotted there. This is overwhelmingly user-based, right, this survey. Uh, and that's not surprising. For me, uh, and with the limited time I had to do the analysis, uh, it meant it was an easy one to, to come back to. Like I, I do want to say, if we want more analysis, if I haven't hit the spots you're looking for, I'm willing to do a bit more on it. I had to make some choices. Um, this was a question I kind of looked at it and went, well, I'm not going to get a lot of differentiation out of this one. So I'm going to put that one to one side. Now, you can come back to this. We can look at it later. Uh, but for now, given that we know that the vast, vast, vast majority of responses here are coming from users, we kind of just want to look at it as a user survey. For the most so part. one of the things here is this is actually the exact same way we asked this on the uh, Fedora contributor survey. I don't know if that's helpful. Oh, OK. That all. could be interesting. That could be interesting. Oh. Um, I'll and talk I can about get that you later. Yeah, I can get you that stuff from last year if that uh, can potentially help. that helps us make it a little more representative. I'd still be a little wary of sampling bias on the basis of one question, but it does help. It yeah. does help to generalize it a bit. Um, so that's that's worth thinking about. Okay, I mean, when you when you look at, I guess I don't want to get derailed too much, but very quickly, do you see a similar kind of distribution when you look at the wider survey? Uh, this is vastly, much vastly more you. Uh, the okay. weight here for users is much higher. Um, okay, that will yeah. be interesting then. So that could but, be a, that could be a, a future extension here, um, which we could talk about in a bit. So that'd be good. Okay, but for this for this analysis, I kind of put this to one side, meaning to come back to it, and never really did. Um, the second one was use cases, uh, which I think was much uh, more reasonably distributed. Uh, so this is, you know, what do you use Fedora for? Uh, and then finally, we had the interest one. I did keep the uncertains in here just to give an idea of that kind of distribution. I also tried breaking it out this way as well, which I think is slightly more readable. Um, so you get an idea of um, no no uncertain yes, not three breakpoints, two breakpoints, I guess, um, across the different categories. Um, what we're going to see is that this pattern, where no is pretty much the largest category in every case, is going to be the pattern, right? Um, but we can we can look at it a few different ways. I was just trying things out, basically, and seeing what, what stuck for me. Um, so there was this one. Oh, I thought I'd redone this one. 
Let me reload this page one. Ah, there we go. Um, I did redo it with percentage symbols. So this one was me trying to look at the intersection now. So so bar charts are not too hard to make, right? So you just count all the yeses and off you go, all of the uncertainties in this case. Um, from here on out, I started to try and add a bit more value to this. Um, so this one was me trying to think about, OK, I'm going to put role to one side. I'm going to look at the interaction between use case and AI and see where that comes out. Um, and so this is the percentages here are, so I'm counting the yes answers just the yeses, and I'm putting aside um, everything else, and I'm counting what is the percentage of yeses in this section as a as a group of the, the whole like 2,000 odd responses that we have um, in the, so 2,000 complete responses. So there are 3,000 lines in the spreadsheet, 2,000 of those have actually like not just skipped entire questions, um, and then that's what, that's the data set we can use, right? So this is a, as a percentage of those 2,000 responses, what do we see? So I think there's some in, some obvious patterns, particularly on the usage side. People who work with desktops or um, media uh, um, seem to be a little happier. Um, and then we already know a bit about the categories looking at those bar charts earlier. So things like tooling and infrastructure seem generally more interesting than, uh, also more positive, I should say, uh, than some of the other categories. Um, so that's one way to look at it. Um, and then, <sighs> Realistically, we're going to get straight into the complicated bit now because this is where it gets more fun. As I said at the start, I was interested in what's people's general perception of AI, which is a question we haven't asked, right? And so I started trying to build some models of this because that's the kind of thing I find fun because I'm weird. Uh, and the model I ended up with, I wanted to build a bigger model that included use case. I ran it. It took 48 hours on my server, and it didn't converge. So um, I will come back to that when I can get that model to actually run. Um, this model is just looking at, so um, the model I ended up doing for this report is basically there's some baseline intercept of what the entire world thinks about AI, right? Not too interesting. Then there's some variance of that within the categories, okay, that we have to account for. And there's some variance um, within the people, right? So there's a distribution across all of our respondents as to how they feel about AI. And what I want to do is separate those two things out and then look at them separately. So I want to look at context and see what people think about those contexts. And then I want to look at the people and think about what they think as well. And, and they, as you can see from this heat map, they're intertwined, right? So you need that model to kind of tease them apart. So that's what I did. Uh, and then I started looking at the answers. So starting first with the categories, need to explain what you're looking at here. So this is having held the people's variations, trying to hold that constant and out of the way, and looking here at the variation within the categories of questions. So we asked this question of, you know, do you think AI is useful in coding, in moderation, in packaging, whatever. Important note about the x-axis here. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, yes is which direction? Exactly. This is what we call a log odds scale. So zero is 50-50 because we're talking about odds. What is, the, what is the likelihood, what is the odds of someone saying yes to this question, right? Um, and so 50-50, I don't know whether they're going to say yes or no, is zero. So everything here is less than 50%. And um, to put it, the reason it's on that scale is if I shift it back to a probability scale, it squishes everything up towards zero and it gets really hard to read. <laughs> so um, because log odds runs from plus to minus infinity, you can it, it's it's a bit easier to look at. Um, to put this in context, uh, 0 is 50-50, minus 1 is somewhere around 25%, and then obviously it, it goes non-linear after that. It gets squished more and more towards 0. And um, so down here at the sort of minus 3, minus 4 side is very, very, very negative. It's very close to 0% chance of getting a yes out of those people. What you're looking at is, um, so I, I said I built a model. Models will produce plenty of data, some predictions, and this is kind of the distribution of the predictions, right? So somewhere in the middle is roughly where we think the center of that idea is and we get some distribution because um, we've got plenty of responses but you know not an infinite number of responses we don't know exactly uh, what people think so this is and again think, sorry, go on. so so coding is one of the ones where people are much less likely to say yes correct that's absolutely right um and i i wonder whether that's coming back to what you were saying about ethics in your keynote about people's code being reused um we don't know right there's nothing causal we can say here this is just all we get from the data so i don't know why coding seems so negative, but I suspect it's to, due to the type of respondents we get and what they're worried about. Whereas we look at something like infrastructure, which is much, it's more positive, right? It doesn't cross the 50-50 line, but it's still considerably more positive than coding. And I look at that and I think, well, is that to do with 
log analysis, taking actions based on you know event driven stuff. Um, similar for tooling, I wonder whether there's something going on there. Um, I don't know what AI for contributors means, and therefore why it would be better regarded in some areas. <laughs> Um, but some people seem to like that more, shall we say. Um, so this is, again, this is holding the variation between people constant and just looking at the very, uh, and trying to look at the variation in the categories. Um, does this make sense? Is this okay? Because this is kind of, this kind of log odds thing is, is going to run through all of the remaining graphs pretty much. So does that work okay for you? Yes, I, I understand it. Oh. Okay, superb. All right. So that's the context. Now, as I said, I would have liked to have also held use case constant here uh, and account for that because obviously there's going to be variation in how people feel about things based on what they use fedora for um but i couldn't get that model to converge in time unfortunately so i shall i'll keep playing around with it because i'd like to um to explore those interactions a bit more okay so let's so that's context that's that's the ai context uh coefficients model parameters whatever you want to call them let's look at the people so holding so flipping it around and holding the question um out of the way and saying what's people's general opinion of ai what's the what's the variation of these parameters for the people um now we have 2000 responses so i can't put all of them I, I took a sample of 200 here and this now does span zero right so here's your 50 50 line you'll see as we saw with our bar charts the model agrees that um you know more people are going to be uh, down here below the zero line, not really even crossing zero again what you're seeing is that 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 gray those gray lines that's the plausible region for each person, right? Where do I think they're going to land? And it goes really negative for some people um, and really positive for some people. So some people really like AI. And we saw that you, you mentioned some of that in some of your comments as well. <coughs> uh, quite a lot of people are uncertain. And then there seems to be a bit of a gap uh, in the sort of mildly negative area. And then we jump into the kill it with fire section, all right? Um, and that, that gets strongly negative. But this is just a sample of 200. I did plot the entire 2000. Um, it's not very readable, but it, it looks very similar. I just wanted to check it, that I wasn't sampling badly. Uh, what does this allow me to do? Because I'm going to come on to the last plot now, which I think is the most useful one. But I need to explain what I'm going to do. I really hate word clouds. <laughs> um, I think word clouds are a massive waste of uh, a dimension because you're using two dimensions to express one dimension of data, which is frequency. Uh, they're really inefficient. But there are interesting things you can do with frequency and, and as a way of looking at free text. But to do it, you need some numbers. And we don't have any in our survey, right? They're all yes, no answers. So I had to invent some numbers. <laughs> so what I did was this. I took this model, which tells me it can generate predictions, right? And I ran the original survey data back through the model. So I could then put a prediction next to each person as to how likely they were to say yes to a hypothetical question of, do you like AI? Right, and so I can put that number next to every single person. So now I've got one extra column that didn't exist before. That's all I've done so far. Then if you tokenize all of the free text responses, I can get one row per word with the scores, and then I can average for the word. So I can get an idea of for each word that comes up regularly in these free text responses, what is the average sentiment that goes with it? Now we talked before we started recording about averages and bimodal distributions and things. So there's some caveats there, but generally speaking, it allows you to say, okay, for these common words that keep coming up in people's free text responses, where does that land with people? Is it a very negative word? Does it come across as being something uh, that's mostly associated with people who aren't happy with AI? Or is it a word that's mostly coming up in comments from people who are generally? positive about AI. And so that's what I did. And um, I think that's a much more useful plot because it looks like this. Um, so I've just picked the top 100 or so words. Obviously, there's plenty. And there's a couple of things I want to point out. Firstly, AI is the most common word. I probably could have left that off the plot. I don't think anyone's surprised by that. And Fedora is second. So y-axis is frequency, right? On the x-axis, we have our log odds score again. So 50-50, still on zero. And we color it by just, the color is the same as the x-axis. It just helps to, to visually differentiate what's going on. But I think there's some really interesting things to spot in here. So first of all, on the positive side, what words are coming up in the positive side? We've got things like search, things like assistant, things like support, um, running tasks, dealing with code as we move towards the middle. Um, this has dropped a lot more words than on my original version. I'm going to see if I can find my bigger version because... Um, it's better. <laughs> uh, give me two seconds to regenerate this, and I will see if I can get us a bigger version. 
Uh, here it is. Right. Let me let me expand. This. Real time demo. Uh, oh yeah, I can. I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share my tab. Hang on, share the tab because I'm actually running our studio on my server under the stairs because it's got 64 gig of RAM in it, and running that model is even possible. Um, so here's the actual code that runs it. <laughs> uh, so this is the one I want. Can I get this into a bigger? I normally run our studio on my desktop just as an application. I'm not used to using it in my browser, but I wanted the bigger memory here. Um, so this is actually um, where it is. Uh, let's try and see if I can make that go. And then, can I? why can't I zoom that? I want to zoom that, but it's not letting me. Oh, showing a new window. Here we go. Hey, here we go. Right, so if I make this really big um, and then tell it to... Let's see if I can regenerate that again. There we go. Right, share this tab. Bingo. Now we get a lot more words. <laughs> does that does that come? Is that shared? Is that okay. Is that yeah. Right? I yes, have to move it over to a different window so I can see the tiny text. Yes, but, uh, yes, it is big. But I will point out the ones that, that jump out to me because the problem is I've got it set up to avoid overlaps. Otherwise, most of it's unreadable. And of course, the minute it starts trying to move things around to avoid overlaps, it drops the ones it can no longer find places for. Uh, so if you have it on a small um, like um, DPI, then uh, then it drops a lot of words. So this is much more useful. We see things like assistant, documentation, support. Uh, there's potential in here. We've got search. Privacy is interesting that it comes up on the more positive side. I wonder what pe uh, people are interested in maybe thinking about uh, local things being more private than something like uh, ChatGPT. Um, so this is all kind of on the positive side. And then exactly what you'd expect on the on the negative side, hype, energy use, uh, generative stuff, copyright. Um, you know, how do we do training? How do we, how do we do things like that? Is it optional? I think this is a much better way of looking at free text in some kind of structural way. Um, this is the output from both the free text questions. So, but there were, there were two. There was one that was, um, what are the potential problems you think it can solve? And I think the other one was just like, what's, what's your opinion of like AI within Fedora in general, if I remember correctly. Um, so I just bunged it all together into one massive pile yeah. of text. <laughs> My subjective analysis of that kind of shows that people use those fields interchangeably. So I think exactly. So I was like, let's just bung it all together because it's all about people's opinion and the words they use to go with it, right? So, um, so I I like doing these kind of things. I think they're a little bit better than a word cloud. I put a bit more information into the into the X Y positioning. Um, okay, so that that is all I have for you. That is where I got to. I wanted, as I say, to build a model where we could also look at the interaction of the use case with some of this and try and hold that to one side so we get a better um, position for the people, uh, the, the sort of people-based effects. Um, but uh, I couldn't get the model to run properly. Uh, uh, as a, what does it mean for a model to not converge? Or OK, so I, I work in, uh, my, my favorite way of doing things is uh, called Bayesian statistics, which involves a lot of generating of Monte Carlo chains. Um, and if they and the idea is that you look at the gradient, you look at how much it changes every time you run the simulation, you run thousands of simulations, and when it stops changing, um, then you feel like you've converged on an answer, right? And so that's uh, it's what's called gradient-based stuff. And in this case, I ran. 4,000 chains and um, and it just did not ever stop changing. <laughs> so so you can't say that you've reached a kind of steady state kind of situation for the model. Um, the basic idea of Bayesian stuff is that you're adding, every, you start with um, a prior, so you have some guess. So um, I probably shouldn't go too far into this, <laughs> but I'll take up all your time. But consider that we're interested in a person's um, responsiveness to the AI question, right? How likely are they to say yes? Well, that's a that's a, a normal distribution, right? There's some some value, some each person has some value that says I'm this this happy with AI, right? And that's based on your psychology and your experiences and where you are in the world and what you think about various issues and so on. So central limit theorem, if you mix enough things together, you get a normal distribution, right? So we have this normal distribution for this latent thing that we can't measure. And there's some arbitrary threshold such that if a person falls on this side of the threshold, we get a yes. And if it's on that side of the threshold, we get a no. Okay. And what we want to know is what's that threshold. So we have to, we start with some expectations as to what this thing looks like and where that threshold might lie. And then we use the evidence to modify it. That's what Bayesian stats is. Uh, and so you're just running loads and loads and loads of simulations with the data you have and adding that data in and using it to get an idea of where these things might lie and how likely they are to go further away or close together. So, and what, what varies between each run of the simulation? Uh, initial conditions generally, there's a lot of random number generation going on in there. Okay. 
So you're picking, you're generating hypothetical people and then running it through like with your with your data. So you have a what's called a generative model. So in this case, I'm saying, all right, I've got this normal distribution, and then I've got another normal distribution, which is to do with like where do I think the threshold is, right? Because um, it could be it could be over here, and most people are quite happy with AI. It could be over here, and it's quite hard to get a yes, and so on. So I have to have some idea of where do I think that is, and then the simulation will try out different values and see how compatible that is with your data and so on. So you get this idea of what's plausible by the end of it. Um, and that's how we end up with these like nice little histograms for things like the uh, the various types of AI question and so on, because it's it's pulling those. It's, it's basically what you get out of it is a whole new data set of thousands of draws from a, a distribution of what's plausible given your data. So, um, so anyway, all of that massive diversion, but uh, yeah, so the thing is, the, the more complicated you make the model, the harder it is to get it to then um, put enough data in to, to figure it out or to run it for long enough. Um, so I can probably get it to work eventually, but uh, I run out of time. So. All right. Um, we said half an hour. I've, I've used my 20 minutes. I hope this is useful. I'm happy to take ideas for where else to take it. Um, the link to the, the larger survey could be quite an interesting one to explore in terms of how role affects these things. Because uh, as it stands, you would get very little data in any other category. So it's like you'd have you'd be able to do it, but you'd have very wide, plausible regions for those things, right? Because we don't have a lot of data to modify it. So, uh, so I know at, going back to the very beginning with your caveat, we can't make general conclusions about what Fedora thinks here. But um, what would you say is like the, the overall? What does the survey? What the response to the survey say? I, like, what's I the, think no. so. What would I say? I would say that within the responses we have, the sentiment seems to be more on the negative side. People are not super happy about AI. Um, there are definitely some categories that have a better, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, interpretation? That's not quite what I want. Uh, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's um, there's, there's certain areas where people are happier with it, but none of those get super high in terms of like am i going to get a yes to this question do do i think this is a useful thing to be doing none of them get over that 50 percent line right so as of right here it looks to me like the majority of the respondees vast majority don't think this is a good idea <laughs> or at least they don't see a place for it right i think it's probably but given how the questions worded it's like it, the question's all about where does this fit in fedora and i'm you know i'm running a llama on my server right so i can but is that a fedora thing or is that just me running a container somewhere right because that's part of the problem here is what does it mean to even have ai in fedora rather than just something you can run on top of it so yeah and I, the reason we asked it that way is you know we, we kind of wanted to know about things that we can control uh, right. Because there's a lot of AI, like whether you're running Olama in a container or yeah. not, like it's nothing to do with Fedora, it, right? Exactly. How block containers or detect AI models and yeah, you, know, you, yeah, you, can, you can't do anything about that. So yeah, I think within that context, it, it looks to me like a lot of other people have taken that that kind of view as well. It's like what what can Fedora actually make use of directly from an AI perspective seems limited, right? Because again, I run our studio for doing this analysis and I have not got the box checked, but there is a co-pilot box in there, right? But again, it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm running that on Fedora. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a tricky one. Uh, but certainly the data suggests that asking the question, do you see a use for AI in coding, moderation, infrastructure? None of those are coming out majority positive. Although what was interesting to me that when we were had like the bar charts and stuff that were based on the answers, like the numbered answers or whatever, that was like there was a lot of no's. Mm -hmm. But the last picture, um, the zero was like to the left and it went like from minus three and a half to like plus four and a half. So yeah, there, there, definitely some people. there are definitely some people there who So um, could we say that like am I interpreting it correctly that like who took the care to actually write text was more positive? than people who only clicked the thing so i think i think you're th let me let me go back to screen sharing um oh, press the right buttons but, um that's not to say that the text is necessarily overwhelmingly positive but it's more positive than so i i know yeah, that's what i think, I I think was yeah. it this one you were talking about yeah yeah like there's way right, more so this is nothing to do with the text this is nothing to do with the text exactly so this i used the numbers that came out of this to do this one <laughs> but but this oh. one does not analyze the text this is to do with their answers to the ai questions specifically so we've not 
accounted for the use case, like whether you do media editing or gaming, or whatever. We've not accounted for the role, the users, developers, etc. We're just looking at the variance between the AI categories and between the people. And then we're holding the AI categories constant and we're looking at the variance between the people. Yeah. Um, now, what I take away from this is, and this is back to something Matthew and I were just chatting okay. about while everyone was joining, it's bimodal, right? There's not a lot of people in the center. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, there's peak, way more there's a negative here, peak. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is a sample of 200. Um, yeah, if I, sure. um, I think there's way more no's here than yeses, but if you scroll all the way down to the words, that's like right, right. Data, so the word, right? that the was like more positive in there, which is right. interesting. Contrast, there are some right? people who are positive, yeah, right. Um, and and what I can't do with this is like if I go back to this one, right, there's there is a dish for everything I pull out of a model, there's a distribution. I don't get one answer, I get a thousand right mm -hmm. uh, and i can say what's the distribution what's the center of that distribution what's the most likely answer what's plausible region of answers that's the light blue area what's a less plausible re region of answers that's that's the full tail right now i could do that for every single one of these words but you wouldn't then be able to read the graph <laughs> so um so i have to make a choice so what i'm showing where i place these words is like that thick blue line basically so also, the words are like but the AI, but the AI could be over here. So what it's basically saying is the word AI. I I put it here because that's the that's the mean of the distribution for that word. But it could be here, could be here, sure. could be here. It's probably not here, and it's probably not over here. <laughs> but it, it's probably it's somewhere in this region, right? And, and but so like if I, I see, for example, like I don't know, if I just look at it as a volume, right? Like I see like sixty percent of words are positive and like forty percent of words are negative. This is not representative of like that they were like. 60% of positive sentiment. It's more like words that made it. Right, exactly. I'm, I'm doing quite this, a lot yeah, of text yeah. processing. I'm, okay. stemming, I'm stemming the words because you want yeah. like prod and production to be the same thing. And um, I'm doing, I'm removing like stop words. So that's boring words like the, and you know, you're doing quite a lot of text processing. So this mm -hmm. is more about what can I pull out of the free text that helps me to understand that free text. But I wouldn't go backwards from that to look at the people. Okay, so we need to look at the specific words, not like the volume of words in that. Right. I mean, it's interesting yeah. to know the volume of words for AI, Fedora, data. These are higher than words like you know mm -hmm. developers, right? That's still interesting. Um, but these are means, right? So I've taken I've taken this word, which showed up what two hundred times, and that means it's been used by two hundred people. I've taken a mean of those two hundred people's predictions and plotted it here because it turns out those two hundred people were slightly more in favor of AI than. A different 200 people who didn't use the word system right uh, so that's that's how this plot is made uh, so this is about understanding the sentiment of the text rather than the people for the people you look at this one so along the lines of that why does that um the graph below the words graph go why is it asymmetrical why isn't zero in the middle why does it go up to it's, four only down? okay so it's it's log odds again i should have put that on the x-axis so it's the same it's the same as these ones here so zero is your 50 50 line um and then where it goes up to just happens to be where the scores land. Uh, so I could have fixed the limits of the axis, but I just let R pick whatever it wanted in terms of. So need, having it that way, control. that means um, the people who said support are very likely. Right. It's a much higher score than, say, energy, which is, uh, I mean, anything above about two on in either direction is, I think, two ends up at about 90% likelihood, um, you know, so minus so two is, 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 is 10 percent um, that so. is if they said support they are 90 percent likely to be a uh, positive towards ai is that the thing yes. or is it the other way around? yes that's the right way around that's the right way around. So if they're positive towards ai can you so, so that's the right way around saying it. saying the people who were more positive about ai more likely to give a yes answer to a hypothetical do you like ai question those people use the word support were more than the people who were negative. Now, I obviously I could go and pick any one word and look at the actual distribution. It might be that there were a whole bunch of negative people that also used it, but the average is over here, right? Um, so yeah, it's it's a crude it's a crude interpretation, um, but it's yeah. just a different way to look at the free text without having to literally read all two thousand answers. Yeah, sure. there's a, and since I did read all two thousand, one that. of the interesting <laughs> I noticed was that there were a lot of um, basically climate change energy use. Uh, things which use very different wording so that mm. they didn't seem like the same thing like they uh, had very few overlapping words but their actual like human interpretation of it was very much yeah uh, it's tricky smart. to do this kind of thing i um, did um you know 
there's but a certain amount of randomness. There's a a large language of... model might be able to bring this down into yeah. It's um thing. there's um there's a certain amount of randomness to this plot, and I did see I was I was obviously playing around with the settings and like what colors to use and things last night, and um, I did see the word climate pop up a couple of times. In this I don't know why it's disappeared now, um, but as I say, sometimes as it's doing the positioning, it drops words that it can't find a home for. Um, so it's possibly just just gone off the bottom of the list. Um, this right. is about the top hundred words or so. Obviously, there's thousands in the data set, so you know it's uh, it's always going to be a crude tool, but. It, it, I've used it before for other things. It works really well for our documentation. It showed like that people were happy with the content, really hated the navigation and things like that. So I thought I'd give it a go here to try and get something out of the, uh, the text. Aoife. Okay, firstly, I am massively impressed. I'm blown away <laughs> by your mind, Greg. Oh my God, I, this, is, this is fascinating. I Thank love you so much for stats. taking the time. Um, I know you said we, we can't make any like definitive statements mm -hmm based on this survey, which is kind of crap because we were hoping to be able to no. craft some form of guidelines. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, or, yeah. But yeah. what would our, do you see any like meaningful next steps the council could do with this data set? Or do you think there's more to be investigated before we could? Okay, so. So firstly, you're right, it is it is a little frustrating we can't generalize it. It is very hard to generalize surveys. It was always likely that you were going to end up in a situation where it's hard to get away from the sampling bias. People know what I mean by sampling bias. We've seen the famous airplane uh, picture. Because um, if you haven't, I'll show it to you. Um, if you don't mind me taking a quick, quick couple well, of minutes. Let's put it up. All right, I'll pull it up. Hang on. Uh, Ward Cunningham is what we need to search for. Uh, Ward Cunningham was a statistician uh, in the 1940s, and he um, no, it's not. That's that's not. It's Abraham Ward, different Ward. <laughs> uh, Ward Cunningham is Cunningham's law. Um, Abraham Ward. So he was a statistician. Um, and he was tasked with um, he was tasked with understanding where to put armor on planes during World War II, <laughs> and so they brought him a set of data. Right, uh, I'm trying to find the plot, um, and, and I'm having a bad day. For, you can search uh, for airplane holes comes up right away. <laughs> Uh, here, uh, yeah, here it is. Um, this is this is a picture that I found uh, randomly using DuckDuckGo. So let's let's share this tab here. Um, so this is what he got. This is the kind of data he got, right? Um, you see that? Um, and um, and so they said, where should we put the armor? And intuitively, he said, you need to put all the armor where there are no holes, like around here and here and here and. Oh, you see my cursor? I can't tell. Um, but yeah, these kind of areas where wh wherever there are red dots, don't worry about armor there. And and they sort of went, why? I mean, these the, the planes are full of holes. <laughs> and he said, yes, we're seeing the ones that made it back. <laughs> we're the not seeing. There, we, if we assume, important. if if we yeah exactly, if we assume that planes are getting evenly distributed shots across all of their fuselage then the places that matter are the places where we're not seeing holes. Um, and that's kind of the point here, is that we've got survivor bias, we've got selection bias. It's um, We're not getting responses from certain types of people that might be important, right? And that's why it's hard to generalize. Um, yeah. So um, I'll stop sharing that. It's, it's, this is uh, something I really wanted with our flock survey as well, which is the um, the people who didn't come to flock, the, the uh, people didn't come back. To, I wanted... Yeah, it's very hard to get them, right? Because they've usually left the community at that point. <laughs> um, so to your point, Aoife, what can we do? Um, we can make statements about the survey itself. And there were, you know, several thousand responses, which gives it considerably more weight than like 200 responses, right? I think you're perfectly within your right to say, this is what we saw in the survey. And if you don't like it, why didn't you fill out the survey? Um, so, <laughs> you know, I think that's perfectly fine. You just don't want to just be careful in your language. That's all. Make sure you're always talking about the survey because to, to generalize it to the whole community isn't correct. It's probably true, <laughs> but we don't know for sure, right? As for next steps, um, it's tricky. I, I could do more analysis on this uh, for the data set we have. My expectation is it won't change much. 
Um, I think teasing out something to do with use cases could be interesting because it talks to bit, it talks a bit about maybe what about spins and things like that. If there's certain types of Fedora use cases that are more in favor of AI uh, accounting for other variations, then that, that could be an interesting result in itself. But I don't think it changes much about um, the overall result that, you know, in general, the respondees here don't seem super keen on the idea, right? Um, but they don't seem super not keen either. It's more you know, vaguely, um, it, it, it's yeah. like you were talking about Flock uh, and, and Def Conf, right? It's bimodal. There are some people who are super happy. There are some people who are not. Um, you could dig into certain categories. There are categories there that we see getting a more positive response than others. You could go and find out why, what people think that means for them. It could be an interesting thing to look into. Um, or indeed, look into the really negative ones, find out why they're really negative, right? So there's, there's clearly significant differences between those categories, and I don't know why. One of the things that I saw in the comments about neg negativity, which would be something that we didn't, I, that could be explored further, I think, is a lot of people assumed or were worried about us making some sort of, like, um, in the desktop assistant thing that connects to a cloud service AI sometimes sends your data to mm -hmm. cloud service for some sort of analysis and sends things back. Um, and that being, you know, on by default or undisabled or just, you know, kind of shoved at people, uh, people really didn't want that. And I think we didn't ask about that because we're not even considering doing anything yeah, like that. Exactly right. Yeah. But that, seems... that was one of the big things people were really negative about. Yeah, it's it is interesting. I think the biggest thing that comes out for me trying to do the analysis was simply like I don't I don't know what that what some of these categories would even look like. Right, I mentioned it earlier. Like, what does AI for contributors look like? Like, it, it, I don't know. And and I wonder whether there was quite a bit of confusion as people just couldn't quite visualize like what does that thing even mean? What would that look like? Like, and therefore, do I think it's a good idea? Um, like, I can understand where. AI fits, say, in coding, because we've seen tools like Copilot. Um, I can understand using it in infrastructure or something to do log analysis and so on. That's fine. As you say, it's in use on discourse um, and can be used to help in those kind of spaces. But all of these are platforms, right? All of these are things that then provide a tool in some other way. And I wonder if that's what we're really talking about here. Is like, does that, is that what AI for contributors means? Does it mean something you can chat with to get help uh, and know who to go talk to? Because let's face it, the Fedora Wiki is not easy to navigate. <laughs> yeah. Whereas right. you, if you ingested all of that into a model and said and asked it questions, so you can say, who do I talk to about documentation? And you could tell. Right. Them, right. So we actually have a proposal for a uh, you know a chatbot that does exactly that. Um, that's one thing. Uh, another thing might be things like. Um, automated packaging things that may make your make the workflows easier for the, for different you know, things people do in right, Fedora, right. Um, that so kind of thing. I do I do think there's, there's just we've we've asked some fairly open questions and then asked for a yes no uncertain on it and then um, I I suspect there's just a lot of un, literally uncertainty as to what that thing even looks like and therefore it's hard to hard to get an answer. And I think that's why we see such a bimodal distribution because there's going to be some people who unless they're given a very positive vision and clear expectation of what that means are very anti-AI. Um they and presumably they wouldn't care less if you're like, well you can run a llama in a container. Well of course not it's got nothing to do with Fedora, right? Um but equally there's some people who are excited about the potential and therefore without given a clear understanding of what we're talking about are then like to go, well it might help. I like it, uh, so I'm going to say yes to this, right? Uh, and I think that explains some of the... the I, I, I think it's always going to be bimodal, to be honest. I think it's just one of those technologies that divides people. Um, but I do wonder if some of it's just because it's quite vague. Um, so, yeah, next steps might be to clarify some of that. Um, or just to be like, we can't satisfy everybody, we're going to make some decisions. <laughs> that also yeah. would be quite valid, I think. <laughs> I think there's going to be some of that. Um, well, again, thank you very much, Greg. This is really, really You're welcome. Useful. If there's any plots you'd like to see that I didn't cover, because I was guessing a little bit as to where we want to go with this, um, hit me up, because I'm happy to make a few more. They, they don't take too long. Uh, part, the models take a long time. Once you've got the model, it's easy. It's like half an hour's work or something. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to go and see if I can make a better model, because I'm really curious. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think um, the I definitely have ideas for the... Uh, 
the contributor survey, the general uh, the general Fedora I'm, user contributor survey. That I'm I, writing uh, an Ansible I, survey right now. I've not done one in years, and it's going to be ridiculous. But it's, uh, I'm trying to make sure I get it right and practice what I preach. <laughs> Excellent. Um, anybody else have anything here? All right then. Thank you. Thank you, Aoife, for helping set this up. Um, we'll see you all on the internet. Bye. Thank you, folks. Thank you. See you later. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Ooh, oh, someone put a hand up. <laughs> yep. No, no, I think okay. we're done. Okay. okay, I'll stop the recording now. Yeah, fair enough. All right.